Hello everyone, Mr. Schultz here as we dive deeper into quadratic functions. Specifically, we're going to solve quadratic functions. Make sure you put your name at the top of the page as well as the date. You should also put your period. But let's go on. Our learning goals for today is you'll be able to solve quadratic equations by graphing the function and identifying where the solutions are. Now, what are the solutions? So remember from the last video, we talked about the quadratic equations having the standard form or standard equation of ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Now, this can be written out like this, like y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to be like f of x, so the function of x. And you have, still have ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're going to try to put equations into this form to help us figure out what do we need to figure out first, guys? In three, two, one, we need to figure out the axis of symmetry. That's where, if you have a line, draw it down, it'll be the same, both on the left and the right. Now, if you look at my face, it's not, it's not totally symmetrical. In fact, you know, it looks a little off. So I wouldn't have a perfect line of symmetry. So a quadratic equation can have a few different solutions. It can have one solution, it could have two solutions, or no solutions. Now, what does this look like? I'm going to show you in just a little bit, but let's show you what this is. So you'll be able to see this in a graph as where the parabola, wait for it, touches the x-axis. These are also called the quadratic equation, the quadratic equations zeros. So if someone is asked, hey, what is this equation's zero? They're asking, hey, where does it touch the x-axis? So let's go over one solution, two solutions, or no solution. So here we go. One solution is where, hey, look, the vertex touches the x-axis. Two solutions is where the vertex is underneath the x-axis and the two going forever point lines right there. Well, they're not lines, but they're going to, both of those are going to cross. So they cross right here and they cross right here. And then finally, we could have a graph that looks like this. It has a minimum and goes up forever. Now, you we could reverse this. It could have a maximum and go down forever, but start below the x-axis. So here's our three answers. It's going to have one solution, two solutions, or no solutions. Let's go on. So it says find the standard form of this quadratic equation. So number one right here. All right, first thing we have to do is we have to rewrite it. So I'm going to move this x squared to minus x squared to the other side. The opposite of minus is plus. So the opposite of minus x squared is plus x squared. So I'm going to write plus x squared on both sides. And so I'm going to get x squared plus 4x plus 14 is equal to 10. Well, now I just need a minus 10 on both sides to get that 0. So if I minus 10 on both sides, that doesn't do anything with the x's right here. But this 14 minus 10 is now plus 4. And so now all I need to do is figure out what is my axis of symmetry and my vertex. So let's go on. Well, my axis of symmetry is going to be the following. Negative b over 2a. 
So I know my, my b is 4, so it's going to be negative 4, and it's over 2 times 1, because there's 1. How many x squareds are there? There's 1. So it's going to be 2. So my axis of symmetry is when x is equal to negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Well, now all I need to do is plug in the information to figure out what is my vertex. What's the y value to it? So I can plug it in and go, okay, negative 2, I'm going to write it up here. Negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 plus 4. And so I get 4 plus negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, and then plus 4. Hey, look at that. 4 plus 4 is 8, minus 8 is 0. Oh, so I know at negative 2, my y value would be 0. That's interesting. I already got a solution. That's nice. So let's create a value of uh, a table of values and graph it. So I know my middle point, my x, my vertex is at negative 2. I'm going to put 2. And I know my y is at 0. Now, normally I don't like to put my work inside here, and I, I would not recommend doing that. What I would do is, hey, on the side, show your work. Have a table with the just the numbers. Well, I'm trying to save a little space right here and put it right here. But when you're doing it, separate it out a little bit. But I'm going to show you so that you can see how I'm getting this information. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my, I'm just going to plug in these numbers. I'll know if I plugged in negative 1 and 0, I'll figure out what negative 3 and negative 4 is. I don't have to do the work. I'll do it, but I don't have to. So why don't you try it and then unpause the video so you can see my answers in three, two, one. All right, guys. So I already have these first two numbers. And I'm going to show you that, hey, this should be one and this should be four without even having to do any work. But I'm going to show you in just a second in three. Pause it again, just in case you have played it. Pause it again and try to get the answers before I do in three two, one. So at the moment, I reconfirmed those were the numbers. And now I'm going to draw my graph. I know how low I need to go. And I know how wide I need to go. I need to go from four. Well, no, I need to go from negative four to zero. Or let's go negative five to one. And I need to go from negative one, because it, zero is my lowest, to at least six. So let's draw it out and I want you to try to draw it before me in three, two, one. All right guys, so look at my graph. Let me zoom, let me go up so you can see. You can see that it has a minimum at negative two comma zero and you can see that it's positive going up but what's my zero? What's my solution? My solution is when x is negative 2 right here, all right? So here's my graph, here's my, my table of values, my graph, and my solution would be right here, right there. Let's go on to do another problem. Wait, how many solutions is it? How many times does it touch the x-axis? In this situation, just once. Let's go on. So we have the following, we have something that is not in our standard quadratic form. So let's put it into there. So I'm going to pause it and I want you to try and then I'm going to do it too, okay? In three, two, one. So there's actually two different ways we could do it. We could do the distributive property, which is multiplied to each one and we get 24x minus x squared. Or we could do it this way, which will help us later. You should start doing it this way. This is x times 24, so it is 24x, 
and this is x times negative x, which would be x squared, but it's negative. Make sure you remember that. So now, let's take that and put it in standard form. We have negative x squared plus 24x is equal to 143. Well, I need to move this over here. So I'm going to subtract by 143 on both sides. And so I get the following as my standard form of a quadratic. Now we just need to find the axis of symmetry and the vertex. Now remember, the axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a. And that's our x value for x comma y for our vertex. So let's do it. Let's scroll down a little. Now let's plug it in. Negative b, well, it's, that's negative 24. I'm sorry, yeah, that is, because it's a positive. And now we're going to divide by 2a. Now it's not 1, it's negative 1, so it's going to be negative 2. So a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And what's 24 divided by 2? It's going to be 12. So I know my x value is at 12. Well, now I just need to plug in when x is 12, what is my y value? Well, I'll just pull out my handy dandy calculator and get the answer. But I'm liking this. I have negative 144 minus 143 and then Oh, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a multiplication grid. Give me a second, and then I'll I'll jump back into the video in three, two, one. So I broke up the two numbers, 24 and 12, into two parts. So 10 and 2, and 20 and 4. So 10 times 20 is 200. 10 times 4 is 40. 20 times 2 is 40, and 2 times 4 is 8. So if I add all these up, I get plus 2. 88. Hey, wait a second here. Negative 144 plus negative 144 would be 288. But this is negative 287 plus 288, which would be positive 1. So at 12, the vertex is at 12, comma, 1. Well, there we go. I found my axis of symmetry when x is 12, and I found how high is this? It's at 1. Well, let's create a table of values in Desmos and select three x values on either side of the x-axis, or on either side of the axis of symmetry. So we're going to graph and identify the solutions and zeros. Now hold up in 3, 2, 1. All right, guys, so sorry for not taking it to Desmos. But here's a a copy of the graph I, I made on Desmos. I put in our equation, our quadratic equation, and I know that it looks good. Does this make sense? Yes, because it is a has a negative a, so it's going to be pointing down. And does it still make sense? Well, yeah. At 12, the vertex is at 1, 12 comma 1. And looking at this, you know, there's going to be some points that are going to be like good and some points that are going to be like, no, don't use them. So, for example, 11.5 and 0 0.75, yeah, you're not going to want to use that. But if you look at it, there's other points that pop out, especially on Desmos. If you look on this, it automatically tells us the solutions or the zeros. For this case, there are two solutions. 11 comma 0 and 13 comma 0. That's where it intersects the x-axis. And so what you need to do is you need to figure out what are some good choices right here. And we want to make choices that are whole numbers to help us out. Because if we don't, we're going to get to like 0 0.75 or we're going to get to like other fractions we don't want. But Desmos, if you ever get stuck, you can always use Desmos to help you out. However, you're not going to be able to use it on the test. 
So only use your tools appropriately to help you out while you're working. All right, guys. I'll catch you guys in class, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.